Hello again, ladies and gentlemen. I just wanted to uh, do another quick video here since I'm giving this new thing a shot. Uh, what I want to show you today is uh, many of you have seen my music from outer, outer space analog sequencer, and I want to thank you for stopping by and checking those videos out. Got a lot of great feedback on there. Do want to give an update that it is completely working as of a day after I took those last videos. Uh, all of the course and fine pots work correctly, and uh, it was my mistake actually with wiring, so be very careful with wiring. What I want to show you today mainly is my music from outer space sequencer expander. Due to Ray Wilson's design, I was able to incorporate an extra 16 steps of analog control, and you could duplicate this up to three or four times based off the design. He's made the analog boards so they're chainable off of one digital board, which is very intuitive. Uh, what I have is just one step, uh, one set of 16 pots here. I do have another panel. I just have yet to build it out, and I have it uh, start from step one and go through a figure eight just uh, to go along with the rotary feel here. Basically, all of this, the gate switches and all of the control is is manually controlled here at the main sequencer, and this is just another set of 16 CVs that you can use for any number of things. In the example I'm going to show you today, I have these set to control the filter frequency of the sequence that you hear in the background here, running through the MOTM440 filter, which is an amazing filter, my favorite filter. Love the tone of it. Really, my modular is 80% uh, of the patches I use in my recordings involve the 440 filter, so if you don't have one, I recommend you get one. And for the Eurorack guys out there, there. Hopefully there'll be one out there for you soon. It is really something else. Jurgen Heibel Design really need one. But uh, just to get back to the demo here today, uh, I am going to go ahead and just kind of move the camera here in a little bit closer to the speaker. And hopefully you can hear this. Very basic, simple sequence. And what I'm going to do here is turn up the FM2 input on the 440. The FM2 input is being fed by the CV from the second analog sequencer steps. So essentially what you're hearing is those open notes. Those open notes are what we're shooting for here. So I have control of pitch, I have control uh, uh, of the open notes. If I had another one of these, I could set it up to control velocity. And basically with analog uh, synthesis only, you can start getting some really complex arrangements and tones. So I've only recently kind of really been into the analog sequencer thing. I always was a MIDI guy. And analog sequencers have kind of allowed me to rethink the way that I use my modular. And most often now when I record with my modular, it's only with analog sequencers, and, and everything records as WAVE or, or AIFF, depending on which computer I'm using, and uh, I chop the pieces up later. So if you have an analog sequencer, really look for expansion opportunities, because the world only gets better as you go through uh, the learning process here. And again, I, I have learned quite a bit. I have a lot to left to learn, as many of you do, so keep at it, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.